Published 1502 Eastern Daylight Saving Time, the 17th of March 2018. Updated 1946 Eastern Daylight Saving Time, the 17th of March 2018. Thank God that is over. Wales were winners by a point, but this was a drab end to the NatWest Six Nations. The fact that France failed sees their renaissance on hold. Really, they only had one big win in them this year. At times this was incredibly difficult to enjoy, such was the dearth of skill on offer, both sides ruining the second half with countless errors. Most inside the Principality Stadium would have had earache by the end, so often did they hear referee Ben O'Keefe's whistle. France should have taken it, but François Trinduc made a glaring miss from the tee with 10 minutes left. It summed up his night, Wales' Taulup Falatau gets tackled by France's Mathieu Bastereau in what was a physical battle at the Principality Stadium. Bastereau showed why he is one of the most feared forwards in Europe as he burst through Wales' defence. Wales got the first try of the game though when Liam Williams touched down from a Dan Bigar kickoff making it 5-3. France left the kickoff in a disastrous bit of play feeling it hadn't gone past 10 metres, leaving Wales to stroll through. Williams celebrates with Gareth Davies as they go into the lead but Lee Hapenny is unable to kick the conversion be nicking a losing bonus point France they made sure England suffered the intense embarrassment of a fifth place finished their worst performance since 1983 Wales ended second good to see on the table but really like everyone else they were a country mile behind Ireland in this championship Liam Williams and a jinking Gale Fickow were the only try scorers the kickers doing the rest Alan Wynne-Jones battled for his Man of the Match award, but was not content with second place. Runners-up isn't something we want. He said, the biggest thing we will take from that is the character, especially in the second half, but Warren Gatland was more positive. Leading into 2019 we feel we have more depth than in 2015, said the head coach. In 12 months' time we will be in a really good place. This tournament has put us in a really good position. Wales-France is one of the few Six Nations rivalries that does not come with a trophy, but with second, and £3.5 million in prize money, tangible for both this was worth winning. France wanted to prove they had more in them than a blood-boiling win over England, and a Welsh win could justify new selections. France took a leaf out of Johnny Sexton's opening night book for their first points. Trindu coolly knocked over a drop kick after four minutes to take France 3-0 up. Hapenny was on the scoreboard moments later when he scored a penalty after a deliberate French knock on Wenceslas Laurent wins a line out for France as they try to get back into the game before the break. It wasn't long before France got their first try of the match as Gail Ficou burst past the Wales centres to score. Ficou's try kept France firmly in the game and a conversion from Maxime Macano meant it was 14-10 to Wales at half-time but it only took until the next play for their inevitable implosion. Dan Bigger kicked off left and the ball bobbled over the 10-metre line, the French left it but Wales played on, passing to the left wing. Scott Williams' grubber kicked behind and his namesake Liam Hard after the loose ball. The hero of the previous minute was firmly then the zero. Trinduke performed an amazing fumble, missed the ball completely in Liam Williams' touchdown. Martin Williams, the 100-cap former Wales flanker, described it as a Laurel and Hardy moment at half-time. It was certainly slapstick. Lee Hapenny skewed the wide conversion but made amends with his next shot, a penalty after a deliberate knock-on. When Justin Tipuric was taken out at the line-out with 16 minutes on the clock, the fullback hit another to push Wales 8 clear. French mistakes were proving costly. Wales, Hapony 7, North 6, S. Williams 6, Parks 5, L. Williams 5, Big R 6, G. Davies 6, R. Evans 6, Smith 64, 6, Owen 6, D. 69, 6, Francis 6, Lee 64, 6, Hill 6, B. Davies 69, 6, Jones, Captain 7, Tipuric 6, Shingler 56, 6, Navidi 6, Falatau 7, Replacements not used, A. Davies, Anscom, S. Evans, France, Fall 6, Ficau, Bow 7, Bastero 7, Daumeru 5, Grosso 6, Trinduke 3, Bozai 73, 6, Makino 6, Cho Allowed 62, 6, Poiro 6, Preso 60, 6, Polisi 6, Chat 51, 6, Gomez SA 6, Slimani 51, 6, Gabriags 5, LaRue. 
71, 6, Vahamahina 5, Laura 6, Gabriag 77, 5, Kamara 5, Babayo 26, 6, Taulin 6, Replacement Not Used, Palace Referee, Ben O'Keefe 6, Attendance, 74,169, Man of the Match, Alan Wynne-Jones, Wales, the second half was a low-scoring affair as Wales were forced to hold off France for much of it and failed to add any points, France looked threatening at times but the second half was filled with errors and they failed to add more than three points, Wales came back into the match towards the final 10 minutes and managed to do enough in a poor second half of rugby soon they woke up. Hooker Adrian Palissi, in for injured captain Gilhem Guarado, broke down the right and fed Wenskler's laureate who Liam Williams brought down. But with the Welsh defence drawn across like bees to a honeypot France zipped left and soon found a gaping hole. Trin Duke put Gail Fickow through it and the wing joyfully galloped between centres Hadley Parks and Scott Williams. Maxime Macano hit the kick and France were back within a point. All that was left of an exciting half was another halfpenny penalty, and a chance for Macano to miss only his second kick of the tournament. The entrance of scrum guru Rabbi Slimani after 52 minutes was sure to change things up front, and boy it did. From his first set piece the prop pulverized Rob Evans and won his country a penalty on the halfway line. Impact of course Trinduke then banged his touchline, finding kick about as wide as the seven, kicking it way long. What is it with insouciant French fly halves? Some cliches stick for a reason. A couple of French fans stood up in the stands, sorters vu, they offered. For all the game's first half effervescence, it was annoyingly peppered with needless and basic errors in the second. Gareth Davies was tackled by Benjamin Fall as the second half failed to live up to its billing. Trin Duke scored a penalty for France, adding those three points to make it 14 to 13, but also missed an easy kick. Bradley Davies and George North led a mini resurgence from Wales, who had sacrificed a lot of possession in second half. North tried to turn on the pace, but Bastero was able to bring him down and turn the ball over late on skipper for the day. Matthew Bastero was all bish, bush and bash. The dreadlocked 20 stone centre batted the red wall all night and bade Alle, Alle, at his troops several times. But he could not find a way through. If he provided momentum, O'Keefe's whistle took it away. Most attacks ended with a mistake, a blast on the pipe and a break in play. The game had stalled dramatically by the hour mark. It looked like a dumb penalty a moment of magic would win the tie. Liam Williams performed one of the former, stumbling through a ruck illegally, but then Trin Duke madly hooked the kick to the left. It was such an easy shot for a test goal kicker, what a miss. France had another chance for glory when Big Remy Grosso steamed down the left wing with space opening, but Hapenny expertly shut the door, tackling the Frenchman's in two-touch. Then Wales surged, using George North as the least subtle weapon around, sending him heaving on, but Bastero was his equal, turning the ball over at the ruck before letting out another primal scream of delight. The last breakdown steal from Camille Chat meant France ended with one point to take home, at least. Everyone was probably just glad this one did not last 100 minutes like last year. The pair shook hands in mutual respect at full time after Wales were able to hold on and kick the ball into touch. Wales finished second in the Six Nations winning three out of five games and although no trophy, there was extra prize money.